Hey everyone, TN Outdoors 9, running an ammo test of the Federal HST 45 ACP plus P 230 grains. So heavy for caliber and a little bit of gas behind this load. How much relative to the standard pressure HST? The standard pressure has an advertised muzzle velocity of 890 feet per second. We're going to kick it up a couple of notches with the plus P. We're now up to 950 feet per second advertised. And how are we doing at a couple of barrel lengths here? First is the Colt 1911, Government Model Series 80. That's a 5-inch barrel. Now, I have not tested the plus PHST out of this gun relative to today's date or the date of this production of this video you're watching now. Went ahead and chronographed it just to get a comparison. There are five shots measured from 10 feet and the five-shot average coming in a little higher at 957. That's pretty good. We'll definitely take that. Now today, in this video, we're testing with the pocket gun. This is the Springfield Armory XDS 3.3, 3.3 inch barrel. You expect this to drop off, how much? There are the five shots, again measured from 10 feet, and the five shot average, 844 feet per second. So not too bad, and a little bit of muzzle, muzzle rise with this, so you'll have to work to keep it on target for follow-up shots, but it is manageable. Next up, we're going to use the XDS and run one shot of this through the SimTest Media, calibrated to be consistent with 10% ordnance gel, taking the shot from 10 feet. A little high and right on the shot placement, but no pass-through on the 21-inch block. We're going to look at two halves. Here's the first half. Expansion begins about one inch in. And what I've done, I peeled this away because it was about to peel away anyway. So we have really good definition of a permanent stretch cavity. From here to here at its widest point, it is one and three quarter inches. The channel itself is half an inch deep. And again, very well defined. And that runs out to approximately the seven inch mark. So there's your definition in that area. And that's the first half of the track. I believe that first half actually gave us the best view of the permanent cavity, but consistent with that half over here, we are running a half inch deep on that channel as well. So we're at the six, seven, eight, nine, ten inch mark, looking for the bullet on this side, and I'm measuring the leading edge just under 12 inches, 11 and 7 eighths inches. Obviously, it turns sideways. So that was moving, moving quite well through there. And I know a lot of folks are concerned about the 45s expanding in the short barrel. Not a problem in this test with the HST, which has consistently worked well in this testing format. But I think what may have happened, because we had that additional velocity, one, we had a really good permanent cavity through here in this first one to seven inches. But I think we may have sacrificed a little bit on the penetration because of that. There's the high end on the diameter. That is amazing. And the average is coming in at 0 .806 inches. I've rinsed all the media out of the bullet, but still coming in just a little bit heavy at 230.2 grains. I will likely get around to testing the standard pressure 230 grain HST in the XDS. Hope I got my letters straightened out. I thought in this test the velocity was very good, the expansion tremendous, the penetration could be at the minimum or maybe less than what some folks are willing to accept. But again, I think that's due to the higher velocity in this well-designed bullet. As far as recoil, you are going to have it in the 3.3, probably with any plus P load as we get into this testing process, so be aware of that. But that's the trade-off when you want to carry these pocket 45s. The HST ammo obviously is very hard to get your hands on compared to other brands, but I still think it is a viable option for carry. Thanks for watching.